people say, one can't help one's thoughts. But one can. The control of the thinking machine is perfectly possible. And since nothing whatever happens to us outside our own brain, since nothing hurts us or gives us pleasure except within the brain, the supreme importance of being able to control what goes on in that mysterious brain is patent. The idea is one of the oldest platitudes, but it is a platitude whose profound truth and urgency most people live and die without realizing. People complain of the lack of power to concentrate, not witting that they may acquire the power if they choose. And without the power to concentrate, that is to say, without the power to dictate to the brain its task and to ensure obedience, true life is impossible. Mind control is the first element of a full existence. Hence, it seems to me, the first business of the day should be to put the mind through its paces. You look after your body, inside and out. You run grave danger in hacking hairs off your face. You employ a whole army of individuals, from the milkman to the pig killer, to enable you to bribe your stomach into decent behavior. Why not devote a little attention to the far more delicate machinery of the mind, especially as you will require no extraneous aid? It is for this portion of the art and craft of living that I have reserved the time from the moment of quitting your door to the moment of arriving at your office. What? Am I to cultivate my mind in the street, on the platform, in the train, and in the crowded street again? Precisely. Nothing simpler, no tools required, not even a book. Nevertheless, the affair is not easy. When you leave your house, concentrate your mind on a subject, no matter what to begin with. You will not have gone ten yards before your mind has skipped away under your very eyes and is lurking round the corner with another subject. Bring it back by the scruff of the neck. Ere you have reached the station, you will have brought it back about forty times. Do not despair. Continue. Keep it up. You will succeed. You cannot by any chance fail if you persevere. It is idle to pretend that your mind is incapable of concentration. Do you remember that morning when you received a disquieting letter which demanded a very carefully worded answer? How you kept your mind steadily on the subject of the answer? without a second's intermission until you reached your office, whereupon you instantly sat down and wrote the answer. That was a case in which you were roused by circumstances to such a degree of vitality that you were able to dominate your mind like a tyrant. You would have no trifling. You insisted that its work should be done, and its work was done. By the regular practice of concentration, as to which there is no secret, save the secret of perseverance, you can tyrannize over your mind, which is not the highest part of you, every hour of the day and in no matter what place. The exercise is a very convenient one. If you get into your morning train with a pair of dumbbells for your muscles or an encyclopedia in ten volumes for your learning, you would probably excite remark. But as you walk in the street or sit in the corner of the compartment behind a pipe or strap hang on the subterranean, who is to know that you are engaged in the most important of daily acts? What asinine bore can laugh at you? I do not care what you concentrate on so long as you concentrate. It is the mere disciplining of the thinking machine that counts. But still, you may as well kill two birds with one stone and concentrate on something useful. I suggest it is only a suggestion a little chapter of Marcus Aurelius or Epictetus. Do not, I beg, shy at their names. For myself, I know nothing more actual, more bursting with plain common sense, applicable to the daily life of plain persons like you and me, who hate airs, pose, and nonsense, than Marcus Aurelius or Epictetus. Read a chapter, and so short they are, the chapters, in the evening, and concentrate on it the next morning you will see. Yes, my friend, it is useless for you to try to disguise the fact. I can hear your brain like a telephone at my ear. You are saying to yourself, This fellow was doing pretty well up to his seventh chapter. He had begun to interest me faintly, 
But what he says about thinking in trains and concentration and so on is not for me. It may be well enough for some folks, but it isn't in my line. It is for you, I passionately repeat. It is for you. Indeed, you are the very man I am aiming at. Throw away the suggestion, and you throw away the most precious suggestion that was ever offered to you. It is not my suggestion. It is the suggestion of the most sensible, practical, hard-headed men who have walked the earth. I only give it to you at second hand. Try it. Get your mind in hand and see how the process cures half the evils of life, especially worry, that miserable, avoidable, shameful disease, worry. <laughs>